Alleluia! Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia! Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose blessed Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, ascended far above all heavens, that he might fill all things, mercifully give us faith to perceive that, according to his promise, he abides with his church on earth, even to the end of the ages. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit, not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now let's say together Psalm 47. Clap your hands, all you peoples. Shout to God with a cry of joy. For the Lord Most High is to be feared. He is the great King over all the earth. He subdues the people under us and the nations under our feet. He chooses our inheritance for us, the pride of Jacob, whom he loves. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of the ram's horn. Sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our King, sing praises. For God is King of all the earth, sing praises with all your skill. God reigns over the nations, God sits upon his holy throne. The nobles of the people have gathered together with the people of the God of Abraham, the rulers of the earth belong to God, and he is highly exalted. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, 
And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said to his disciples, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And see, I am sending upon you what my Father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up to heaven. And they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple, blessing God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of one God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, there is an old joke in the Episcopal Church that says that we are Catholic light. I first heard that joke from the late, great uh, Robin Williams, himself an Anglican. He said that the Episcopal Church has got all of the religion, but none of the guilt. Now, I am a fan of Robin Williams, and I'm a fan of his work, and I'm a fan of comedy in general. And as is true with any joke, it simply would not be funny if it didn't have some element of exaggeration. And it is, of course, humorous to think of Anglican theology as light, in that uh, we don't always tell you exactly what it is that you have to believe. Anglicanism, after all, is not known for its doctrine. Instead, Episcopalians are expected to do what I call our homework and to remain in communication with God and with our peers to continually develop our theology. And if we say that our theology is light, then we're being overly wishy-washy. And that is not the intention. So 
while I appreciate the humor in Robin's joke, I think it's important that I say I do not agree with it. Because our Episcopal theology is actually anything but light. If anything, I think it's safer to say that our theology is Catholic heavy. Catholic, in that the Greek word katholikos, from which Catholic comes, means universal. And we certainly are a part of the universal church. And heavy in that our theology requires a lot of personal discernment and work if we want to do it properly. We don't always have set answers when people ask us about our beliefs, do we? People often approach me and say, Father Tim, what does the Episcopal Church uh, teach about this topic or that topic? And many times the answer is, we don't have a specific teaching about that topic. However, many Episcopalians do believe such and such. Again, if I don't do a good job of explaining the importance of discernment, I run the risk of making our denomination seem wishy-washy. But if I emphasize the importance of doing our work to arrive at a theological understanding, then it certainly can be heavy. Instead of giving you the answers, we make you seek them. Pretty heavy, if you ask me. Now, I mentioned there are some concepts that we do not make people subscribe to, but it is important to remember that there actually are some things that are non-negotiable. There are some things that we profess to believe. Some of these things are found in the catechism, in the back of the prayer book. In fact, I recommend reviewing the catechism in the back of the prayer book on a regular basis. Sometimes even as a priest, I forget some of the details that are found in the catechism in the back of the prayer book. Other important non-negotiables are found in the creeds, which we pray at least weekly. The Apostles' Creed is said daily during morning and evening prayer. And the Nicene Creed is said on Sundays and principal feast days, like today, the Feast of the Ascension. And the Ascension is precisely one of those pieces of theology that are contained within the creeds. So acknowledging the Ascension is kind of non-negotiable. So that settles that, right? Well, but what if you're like me? What if you don't understand the Ascension? Because I have to admit, in my years of theological study, I do not fully understand the Ascension. I've never seen anyone ascend into heaven. I have no context for that. I don't get it. Jesus has not come to me personally to explain it. And even our scriptural references to the Ascension are kind of limited. So what do we do when we come across a concept that we have to believe even when we don't understand it. Now, you may have noticed that I like to use Greek in my preaching. I think the richness of the Greek language helps to explain some of the scripture and early church documents because so many of them were written in Greek. So, I'm gonna stick with my standard MO and pull out some more Greek. Greek gives us this great word, mysterion, and that gives us our English words for uh, mystery and mysticism. And it helps us to put ourselves at ease 
when there is something that we need to believe, but we don't fully understand. And the great part about the concept of mysterion is that it's not a cop-out. It isn't uh, chalking something up to being mysterious only to say, uh, I'm not gonna worry about ever having to figure it out. It's actually more about resting easy, knowing that I'm comfortable with that which makes me uncomfortable. I'm okay, even though I don't have all the answers that I need. You see, we don't have to understand the Ascension today. We don't have to understand the Holy Trinity in full, in great detail. We don't have to understand how Jesus Christ is fully present in the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist. We don't have to understand these concepts fully in order to believe them. It is okay to say, well, I don't get it, but I'm okay with that. The truth about God is that God is bigger than our human minds can comprehend. He's beyond our human understanding, but he's not beyond our knowing. And the ascension is a summary of that. God in the second person of the Holy Trinity Jesus Christ came to live amongst us and to be known by us and then ascended into heaven. The God who knows us and the God who loves us. And we, when we say we believe that this event happened, we are under no obligation to understand it. Now, I'm gonna circle back to the beginning of my homily, when I mention that I think of our Episcopal theology as Catholic heavy. Our theology is heavy in that it doesn't let us off the hook. Just because we don't understand something doesn't mean we get to stop trying to find meaning. So, I have a responsibility to continue to profess my faith in the Ascension and to continue to discern what it means, even when that might not ever happen, even when it might be unattainable. It's kind of like following Jesus. We are called to follow Jesus, and we are called to be like him, even though we know we can never really fully do it. Our inability to be fully Christ-like does not get us off the hook from trying to be like him. So, let us all remember to continue to do our homework. Let us all continue to discern with God and our peers, our theology. And let us remember that concept of mysterion that allows us to set a concept on the shelf and to not let our lack of understanding interfere with our ability to believe. It isn't easy to do, but no one said it was. Perhaps someday it will be revealed to us. And perhaps it won't, but either way, we continue to believe. Amen. And now let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. 
For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church, that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Guide us in the process of discerning a new rector for our parish. Give us wisdom and courage to find a caring pastor for our people, so that we can serve you and a world in need. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and for those of others. You may add your own petitions here either silently in your heart or aloud in the room where you are. We remember especially Cliff, Anita, Colleen, Sarah, and Martha. We pray for all those afflicted with the coronavirus and those who care for the afflicted, for people in economic trouble because of the pandemic, for people facing difficulty because of the emotional impact of social distancing, for people in hospitals and care facilities who cannot have visitors, and for family members who are affected by having loved ones in quarantine. Let us pray for all the men and women in the uniformed and armed services and their families. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for St. John's Episcopal Lutheran Congregation in Williams. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for all members of the Anglican communion around the world. We also pray for our companion diocese in Navajo land and our companion parish and school, St. Paul's in Haiti. We pray for All Saints Episcopal Day School, our students, teachers, administrators, and support staff, and especially the graduating class of 2020 and their families and teachers. We pray for all our guests today, that they may find our community a place of welcome and spiritual nourishment. And we pray for loved ones departed, remembering Angie, Ruth, Jennifer, and Mary Frances. O oh Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, 
by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. And now the peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. Feel free to exchange the peace with those around you at this moment or text a text of peace to someone that you know. Um, and know that I wish you the peace of the Lord, always. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Blessed be God. Blessed be the holy and undivided Trinity. Blessed be God the Father, the maker of heaven and earth. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be Jesus Christ in his death and resurrection. Blessed be Jesus Christ on his throne of glory. Blessed be Jesus Christ in the sacrament of his body and blood. Blessed be God the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life. Blessed be God in the Virgin Mary, mother of our Lord. Blessed be God in Joseph, guardian of the incarnate word. Blessed be God in his angels and in his saints. Blessed be God. God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless you and keep you. And now please join me in our prayers for spiritual communion. Almighty God, you promised through our Lord Jesus Christ that where two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. We ask you to be in the midst of us now though we are far apart, and to bind us to one another and to you through the power of your Holy Spirit. In that one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, and though we cannot break bread together, we know that we are one body, because we have all shared in the one bread. We ask this not only on behalf of those of us gathered at this moment, but also on behalf of all those who will be with us in the spirit at the time they hear these words. Just as you, Father, are in the Son, and he in you, so may we also be in you, and Christ in us, through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. May the risen Christ, who has passed into the heavens, clothe you with power from on high, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah.